Welcome everyone. It's uh, early February, early in the morning. One thing we don't have today is rain, which is amazing. I'm by Kanaka Creek Regional Park, looking for a spot. My first time here, so uh, there's a plethora of places I could paint. I'm just gonna take a little walk, see what I can find. The light's gonna change as we move, although it's pretty overcast today, but I expect some light to come out. We'll see what it has in store for us. I'll uh, touch base when I find a spot. After walking the trail for a while, I found a spot that I'd like to paint, it's, uh, right against the canyon wall. I'm gonna have to uh, force some perspective with adding some white to get some more atmospheric perspective, just to get a little more depth. But what I like about it is you can see the logs there, and the tree on the far right, I'm gonna bring it in to close off the right hand side of the composition. Maybe I'll throw in a tree or two on the back cliff there, but I'm gonna push back and see if I can get some depth. But of course, the star of this scene will be that rock, the green rock in front with the water passing through it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. As with all my paintings, I start off with a sketch, and this one took a little bit longer than normal because it's my first time here, it's a different composition, and I really wanted to get everything in the, in the right place, especially since I was readjusting things a little bit. I won't bore you with the details, so move ahead a little bit. I start getting into the blocking phase. I put in those back cliffs that you see. I try to go with a uh, muted green. Uh, I change this two or three times later in the painting, as you'll see. Moving into the water, and I'm trying to get the nuances of the not just the values that I see, but also the temperatures. So I'm just putting in the blue right now, and then I'll, I'll move into more of the sienna colors. You also see I put a little more warmer ones in the left. And I just keep on working through, looking for the subtleties in the water. For me, the worst thing you can do is just put it all in this one color, because you can see the subtlety of temperature within that water, and you might as well put it in as you're building it up. And I put in far left hand corner, I put in a dark rock just to keep you in the frame there instead of having you fall out with the water. I move into the uh, the main ro rock, which is my star of the show. And then I start putting in the, the real darks of the fallen trees in the background. This is kind of the shadow pattern that I see. And it's probably the darkest darks that you see within the painting. I bring that over to the tree on the right hand side as well. And I just skip around back and forth, back and forth. I put in some greens to give it a little bit of foreground in front of that background cliff. And then I start working on the logs again. I move back and forth, back and forth. And here you see, that's a log that wasn't there, but I thought was important to put there just because I needed a sense of depth. I start putting in some values and temperatures in the tree on the right hand side. And then I finish off the rock. And now I adjust that back cliff face again. I use more of a violet. I darken it up a little bit. And then you'll see me start putting in some patterns for the different values that I see that created the rock face. Uh, but then again, this isn't the last phase. It got too complicated, and you'll see me adjust that a little bit later on as well. But I did see some cool shadows and some warm shadows, some warm plant light back there. And so that's why you see me putting in these cools and warms. And I leave it at this stage uh, and move on, and I'll come back in a little while. I start moving into the fallen logs themselves, putting in the shadows just to get that sense of depth there. Working on the beach there and where the logs are. Then I start moving into the tree and then I start getting into this front rock as well, trying to get the, the light pattern on it. And that one rock that you see on the left. Getting the lights in there as I see them. And then trying to put in the lights there on that one rock, keeping them in that mossy green color that those rocks that are constantly wet have. Remember, this is the Pacific Northwest, so pretty much everything is covered in moss. You leave your car outside long enough, it's covered in moss. Putting in some darks of the water that I see. Moving into the background, try to get some of the greens in there. Putting in the fallen log behind those logs, just so I can have an edge that creates some contrast. Uh, with the lights on the log themselves. And now I start putting in a little bit of the sparkle of the water. This is a toned down value. It's not extremely white. It's a, uh, a bluish white. So the value is around a four, three or four. Um, but I will adjust that a little bit later on. I, I just want to put it in as a reminder for where the highlights of the water are going to be. Working that tree, bringing some of the light blue in there, just to create a, the overcast day feel in the lights. Bringing in some the greens in the background. Now there's a rock there in the center that I'm painting in, so you can see I'm putting in the darks and the lights. And then the indication of some rapids in the water. Working on the foreground rocks again, putting in some lights, putting in some mid-tones. 
now this is where I really get into the water here. I start putting in uh, something a little more dark. I had a value in there initially, and then once I got more of the surrounding objects in, I decided I really needed it darker. So I changed the value, increased the temperature until something warmer. Now I'm putting in some of the cools, trying to get the flow of the water. It, uh, it's really hard to get the flow of the water, but all you got to do is observe, put it down, observe, put it down, and eventually the process will take you to completion where you actually get a sense of how the water is moving. You got to trust the process. Putting in some of the ochres that I see and some of the really warm tones that I see in the water as it comes to the foreground. Just putting in one piece at a time, knowing that I'll get there in the end. Just in that rock in the bottom right hand, or bottom left hand corner. Putting in some more cools. So it's just a matter of shifting between the warms and cools that I see in the right shapes and the right places. Water is a tricky beast because it's always changing, right? But it always has some sort of a semblance of a pattern. Uh, instead of working on the water to infinitum, I move back to the log area where I work on the beach. I work in some darks in the back cliff. Put in a nice warm light near that tree that I know is going to be nice. Using a smaller brush, I start going in with the smaller shapes of the different temperatures and values that I see in that water. You start with the big shapes and you move the smaller shapes. I put in some darks by that tree, coming down, putting the darks in by the water. Working in those back. Log jam again, adjusting some values. Now I'm just doing some scratching in, trying to get all the little brushes in there that I see. And now here I go, working on that back cliff face again. I'm going to change the value with a darker violet and simplify it considerably. Here you see me darkening it on left. I'm lightening it on the right, so it's going to create a natural gradation to pull you in from left to right. And it creates a little more sense of the foggy feeling of the day as well. Throwing in some darks of the moss that I see in the background and some highlights just to get a sense of depth. Bringing all that into that rock in the front. It's really a back and forth. Using a small brush trying to get the nuances in the water again. And now I think I spend a lot of time on the water just trying to get it right. Looking for patterns. And of course I move over to the tree. Work on it for a bit. Back to the water again. It's a real push and pull moving back and forth everywhere. Nice warm highlight by the, by the tree there. Now moving in over the water, trying to get the rapids in, throwing in a little bit more violets, kind of reflection or a continuation of the cliffs, I guess. Create a little bit of continuity within the painting. Trying to get the flow of the water here. Moving into my smaller shapes, of course. And it's just moving back and forth. you got to trust the process, right? A little bit here, a little bit there. And I'm, I'm building up the water. I'm not doing the fun highlights yet I'm doing I did the base of the water underneath and now I'm doing kind of the uh, shape of the water how it moves and then I'll get into the sparkling of the water later on using the smaller brush to get the smaller shapes of course just going back and forth doing dibs and dabs water is such a variable thing it, uh, it changes so much it has a lot of variety into it moving into those back log jams getting at some highlights really trying to punch them out As I shift, you can see me doing a little bit of branches off, coming off that right-hand side tree, working on that water again. And now putting in some of the sparkle in the water as well, dibs and dabs, small strokes, small squiggles, just trying to get a sense of flow, sense of energy, really. Working with a lighter blue. Now here I do the final strokes for the highlights on the, on the green rock in the foreground. One on the right, boom, and then I keep on moving through doing the water again. And then the last few highlights on the logs, these are a little bit warmer, just to help punch it out a little bit from the contrasting violet. Sign my painting, and all is done. Well, that was a fun time. That was, uh, that was an amazing painting for me. I learned so much on it. My initial plan with the large cliff face back there didn't pan out at the beginning, so I had to change it a couple times until I got it. The violet is what I really enjoyed about that more than anything. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell if you're willing. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, cheers.